of a baby. Protestant or Catholic Church, because you would be representation that I, I, I hold to this to be Bible, and it's not. That's how serious it is. There have been Christians who have been killed and tortured by churches over the stand of baptism. That's how serious this, this statement is. Matthew 20, 22. And Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye have. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm to drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I'm to be baptized with? And the answer said, We are able. He said, Ye shall drink indeed my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but to, uh, but to it shall be given to them for whom is prepared of my Father. Now Jesus is almost ready to go to the cross. At this point in time, and nowhere between now and the cross of Jesus, Jesus is not going to a body of water to be baptized. Now see, there are some religions that see the baptism, they, they see instantly water. You'll find no water in this chapter. And what the baptism is here is when you're looking at James and John and the cup, it's the suffering, it's the death. And that's exactly what baptism pictures for us. It's not salvation, it's I'm standing up out of the water, I'm going to die to sell. He's going to put me under water as you would do with a dead body. And I'm going to come out of that water and resurrect it in life. John, more so for James, is going to die. He's going to suffer as Jesus Christ will suffer on the cross. And the cup is the death. The baptism is the death, the burial. Yeah, he said, you're going to drink the cup and you're going to be baptized. We're not talking about water here. We're talking about dying as Jesus Christ will die. There's absolutely no water. Baptism could mean death. Uh, and John and J James and John have already been baptized by John the Baptist before Jesus showed up. So, wouldn't say you're getting baptized again. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And there will be some heresies. Well, look at that. Jesus said they're going to be baptized, so they're going to be baptized again. Mark chapter 10, verse 38. And there's, there's a heresy out there called Anabaptists. Now let me explain. What, the Anabaptists were not the heresy. The Catholic Church called them the heresy. Anabaptist, Anabaptist means rebaptizer, which is wrong. But what you do is you got somebody who was baptized as an infant in the Catholic Church. Along come these baptized, that these Baptists. And these people are getting saved and they're baptizing them after salvation. And the Catholic Church is saying, you're rebaptized. No, we're baptizing them correctly. You've been baptizing them wrong. We're not rebaptizing them. And about, that's what it means. To rebaptize. We're properly, scripturally bound that they have received Jesus Christ as their Savior. And now they're getting baptized according to the Scriptures. Don't even reference us to your baptism. That's what it is. Uh, verse 38. Again, but Jesus says to him, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink the cup that I have to drink of, the cross, death? He says at the Lord's Supper, Take this cup. This cup is the, is the death, is the blood of the New Testament. Death. And be baptized there again with the baptism what I'm to be baptized with? And they said that we can. Jesus said, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and the baptism that I'll be baptized of. With all shall you be baptized. But the sin of my right hand. They're not going to a body of water. 
Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, when we, get, when we see all the scripture, we will see where this is going. But you've got to have scripture with scripture. You've got to study to, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed. You cannot take this video, Luke 1250, and you can't stop the message right here and say, well, we got Stiley's teaching, baptism, after you've been baptized, or it means you can't teach, then you'll be teaching heresy. Because I'm not going to teach heresy because we got more scripture to look at. He says in Luke 12, 50, but I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straight until it be accomplished? Well, Christ has already been baptized. And somebody will go again in Luke chapter 12 and say, well, see, water. Go look for water. It ain't in that verse. You cannot get the mindset, and there is a mindset out there for some individuals of religion. When they see the word baptism, they see water. That's wrong. That's absolutely a heresy. But... Again, they're a religion. Baptism of water. Baptism of water. Baptism of water. water. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. Now we go to Romans chapter 6, verse 3. We're going to go ask Paul. And I'm not Paul only ism, but let's ask the man who is said to the Gentiles, who's called to write to the church. Let's see what he has to say. When it comes to the authority of the church, we're not going to run to Matthew. Matthew's Jewish. We're not going to run to Peter. Peter's an apostle to the Gentiles. Though he had the keys to the Gentiles, Paul is called to the apostles, uh, I mean to the, to the Gentiles. In Romans chapter Romans, Romans are Gentiles. Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Paul has just told you, what is that baptism? It's death. James, John, can you be baptized in the baptism we're being baptized? Paul says that baptism that Jesus Christ was talking about was death. That happened even before we were baptized after we were saved. When we trusted Christ as our Savior, we, hey, we died to the world. And then when we say, okay, the next ordinance of the church is I'm to be baptized. I'm to make a public profession before the church before and whoever I invite to come I'm dying to self that's it I'm going to live no more for my too bad many Christians don't but I'm going to die to myself and I am a Christian I'm going to serve God that's what it means and if you are baptized hopefully your pastor preacher has told you exactly what baptism is because if you walk away from baptism you have not changed you have not been that new creature you didn't die to self you lie. Now we have that, we have in us that, that where John says in 1 John 3, sin not. Good. But if any man sin, we have, we got to fight that sin. How do we fight that sin? This flesh is dead. You put it in the ground. It's not the zombie apocalypse that's going to get us. It's your flesh coming out of that grave. I need entertainment. I need lust. I need sin. You get back in the grave. We're going to live for Jesus. And the Bible, Paul writes to, I think it's Ephesians. We lust not to the spirit, and the spirit envies against the spirit, against the flesh. We got a b battle right now between our flesh and between the spirit. The flesh wants to do sin, and the spirit wants to do right. We're baptism of the death of that flesh. Get back in that grave. 
Shut up and get back in that grave. Very man. Shut up. Get back in that grave. That's the baptism. Not water. It's only one time we're to be baptized. The baptism, Paul says, is death. Colossians 2.12. And when you get it wrong, you got great error. It's like some people say, well, I need to get born again. Okay? I need to get reborn again. I need to get born again. I need to get born again. No, you don't. See, the devil's gotten the Christian and the world to think, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. I got to do it again. It's not so. And that's the form of the Catholic Church of the Mass. We've got to kill Jesus again. We've got to kill Jesus again. We've got to kill Jesus again. No, that's not it. The devil wants to set forth, I've got to do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. No. God says one sacrifice, one time. So Colossians 2.12. Ready? Bury with him in baptism. Now let me ask you a question. I've never baptized anybody. I haven't been a pastor of a church, but if I were to be a bat, if I were to become at some time a pastor of a church, somebody in my church got saved. Alright? And I told him, say, listen, next step is baptism. And I took him to the water, whatever the water is. And if I buried him in baptism, what would what would what would happen if I take that guy and held him underwater? He died. Buried with baptism. All right, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, stay down. Stay 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 down. Stay. He's going to die. You read the verse. Buried with baptism. You don't keep him in the water. I came out of the water. Buried with baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Our baptism... Symbolize the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our baptism of our daily life. Today I'm getting up. I'm putting this flesh in the ground. I'm going to bury this flesh today. I'm coming up as a new... What can I do? I mean, every morning, what can I do for you, Lord? Not yesterday. And it's not tomorrow. Today I'm going to carry my cross. I am... I'm putting that flesh down. I'm going to put it under. I'm going to die that flesh. I'm going to, but it's going to come up. You don't get in the water every day. We're to, we're to put this flesh down. The only way to put this flesh down is bury. Now, I don't mean go out in the backyard and bury yourself. In there. It's spiritual bury. Don't feed the appetite of the flesh. That's where you say, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm going to do right. That's the baptism. It's the dying to self. When you are involved or going to be involved in a sin, and you say, no, I'm not doing it. At that moment, I'm not telling other times where you said no and you did. I'm saying at that moment, you are, you, you're, you're baptizing yourself in the grave with that body. Oh, you can't have it. Sometimes when you do get into that sin, you, you, you're that zombie. You come out and you, and you feed it. The biggest battle you're ever going to have in life is not against the devil. It's not fighting another nation. It's fighting your flesh that wants to do wrong and you want to do right. That's the fight. That's the baptism. You gotta tell the flesh, no, you can't have it. And that's like telling a two-year-old kid he can't have extra cake. So the baptism of death. Now James will die by the sword. John will be tortured. And for them, it's it's actual literal bapt that literal painful death as Jesus Christ.
We don't know if we're going to have that baptism of death. We don't know, I mean, we're either going to go peacefully in our sleep, or, I mean, is our body going to fail out, or are we going to die for the Word of God and for Jesus Christ? That would be a baptism of death. We don't know. But it's also a baptism of death to say to this flesh, that's it, we're done. So as far as the gospel, the baptism pictures suffering and death as Jesus Christ suffered and died. Oh, I, I, you know, you're fast. No, I'm just so hungry. I'm just so tired. Well, so was Jesus. So was Paul. Your body's not healthy. But I'm going to carry the cross and I'm going to do right. Then the zombie in you comes up. Don't worry about the zombies in the graveyard. Worry about the zombie in your flesh. I want to sin. No, shut up. I want to do right. No, you don't want to do right. Shut up, I said. And it's like Lazarus. No, get back in that tomb. Jesus didn't call you out. And then when the day we do die, the Lord tarries. They're going to hopefully bury us. What's going to happen one day? In the rapture. He's going to call us out of that grave. We don't bury anybody in water. I mean, if you're in a shipwreck, okay. People in the Titanic were buried by water, but that's not usual. If we're to die, the Lord tarries, then hopefully they would bury you in dirt. But guess what? That's the baptism. You've been buried, not water, you've been buried in dirt. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to come out of that dirt one day. I mean, that's going to be a fascinating fact when the rap if we are alive, or whoever is alive when the rapture happens, when those graves stop popping open. And you can say, that Christian, he died, they buried him, and look, he's arising at the trunk. The dead in Christ shall rise first. There's a, there's one, there's a death baptism. And there's a res resurrection when the Lord calls us all home. Some of us are not going to get dead. Whenever the rapture happens, some Christians are not going to. Paul says, whosoever remains shall be caught up again. We're not going to have that baptism of death. So there's a baptism of water to tell everybody, I'm dying to sell. There's a baptism, I am going to die to this flesh and try to serve God, but the zombie comes back. You've got to conquer the zombie. And then this day, if we do die and they do bury us, well, guess what? I'm coming out of that grave. Paul says, we're not to weep as others weep. What's the lively hope? When I, when I buried my wife, Lisa, and I looked at that grave, you ain't keeping her. It's been ten years. You ain't keeping her. Once the Lord calls, that's it. She's out. She's got victory right now. She's finally got victory over that sin. Of that flesh. You take a dead body and put 200 pounds of weight on it, it ain't going to cry, it ain't going to have a problem. Because it's dead. And when we try to live as a Christian, try to do right, we're a living nightmare because we are alive but we're supposed to be dead. So baptism pictures death, not salvation. It pictures Christ's death. It pictures our death to sin, the old man. We were an old man one time. Now we're supposed to be a new man. Good luck trying to see that in Christianity today. Baptism is again, here I stand before others. I go under, there's a burial. I come out resurrection. That's the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection. Now you do that with a water baptism, you also do it living as a Christian. But not everybody's going to see that. Now some people are saying, uh, I heard he's fasting. Man, man, he, man, he hasn't had anything to eat today, just the water. Well, I don't know how he does it. I mean, but they don't see whatever sins else is tempting you. Somebody may say, you know, if you smoke, oh, and that guy hasn't had a cigarette in a long time. He hasn't seen out there smoking with everybody. That's because you had put the body in the grave and said, I ain't doing it no more. The water baptism is for all to see, but our fight with 
the flesh as we're living. Others may not see it. Your pastor may not see it. Your spouse may not see it. Your children may. But you and God and the devil see it. And then when you die as a Christian, well, all those that are present at your funeral will see it. And then the day of the rapture, all those that are still happening here at the rapture, we're going to see it. You're going to see you come out somehow. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I don't know if there'll be a noise. But can't always think baptism as water. That's wrong. Matthew 3.11. Because those who do take it as baptism of water, why, whatever their religion is, why don't we, when they're dead, why don't we put them in water? It's the same thing. I mean, you figure if water can save you and it can't, why not when you die put you in the water? Make the fish happy. Matthew 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water and repent. Okay, that's water. But he that cometh after me is mightier than that. That's John the Baptist speaking about Jesus. Whose shoes I'm not, not able to, I, shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, there's another problem. There's a baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's a baptism of fire. Did you know there's a baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's a baptism of fire? Did you know that? Well, we know about water. In that verse, I baptize you with water, but there's coming one that baptize you with the Holy Ghost with fire. You don't want to be baptized with fire. That will hurt. So, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost with fire are not the same. And yet there are Pentecostals saying, I mean, we're baptized with the Spirit and the fire. No, you're not. You do not want to be. You absolutely don't want to be baptized. That's a heresy. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Go ahead and wait for it. Mark chapter 1. So we saw baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire, did we not? Okay. So we saw that. Okay. Okay, you ready? Mark chapter 1, verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water. Can we see that? Okay. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and it came to... What's missing? I guess Mark wasn't a good Pentecostal because he forgot the fire. Mark, you forgot the fire. Mark is not a good Pentecostal. Luke 3.16 you see what Scripture does with Scripture when you look at... I mean, these people that go to one Bible verse and that's it. You're, you're a fool. I mean, I, I wrote something today about that Philippians chapter 4. Uh, I, I can never quote it right, but you know, God should provide all you need, need that one. That is so taken out of complex. There's more than one verse in that chapter. But Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Oh, here's a 3, 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. Here's the water. For one mighty than I cometh, Jesus, the last of shoes I'm not worthy to lose, he shall baptize you with Holy Ghost, oh, all right. and with fire. All right, Luke is kind of gospel. Mark is bad mark. John 133. I mean John 130. Yeah, John 133. John 133. John 133. And he, I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. Okay, we got that down already. 
The same said to me, Upon whom ye shall see the Spirit descending, remain upon him the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. I saw. John and Mark, are, are, they're not Pentecostals because they forgot the fire. Bad boy. So when you deal with the Pentecostal, remember Mark and remember John. There's no fire. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. See how we're using the Bible to help us understand the Bible. We're not looking at what men have to say. I hear so many things. Well, that's what I was taught. I don't care what you taught. If it conflicts the Bible, you're wrong. There are people who say, as you turn to Mark, um, Acts 1 5. Well, they tied a rope around the high priest's ankle when he went to the holy place. And the I don't see no rope at all. God give it explicit direction for the, the, mit the mitre, the robe, the ephod, the breastplate. He didn't say anything about a rope. Why are you adding to the Bible? Acts 1 5. John truly baptized with water. Oh, we got that down. But he shall baptize with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Luke is the writer of the book of, of Acts. Luke mentioned fire in the Gospel, but he didn't mention fire in the book of Acts. Luke came out of the Pentecostal church and got it right. So that's enough. How the Gospel of Luke said fire in chapter 1, verse 1, he's writing to the office this. Luke chapter 1, he's writing to the office. This is Luke. In Luke chapter 1, verse 5, there's no fire. So, we got a problem. Chapter 10, Acts, verse 47. Scripture with Scripture, I have not quoted anybody but the Scripture. And I think the verses we're looking at are the same verses that we're looking at, and I have not taken anything out of conflict. Notice how we keep going through the Bible, and I have not, I have not stopped at one verse and given you my complete thoughts on that verse. You got other verses to back up other verses, and that's why the Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God." A workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing. We're rightly dividing. And uh, Acts 10 47. Can any man forbid water? Alright, we got the water. Don't we got that? That ye should not be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost as we. There's the water of baptism. There is the Holy Ghost. That's Peter. You're dealing with a Gentile. An Italian who was a Catholic and got right with the Lord. And you read the story about Cornelius. Cornelius was your typical Catholic. Uh, 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they prayed, and they prayed to him to tarry certain days. There's no fire. Water and the Holy Ghost. Plain and simple. 1 Corinthians 12:13. First Corinthians 12, 13. I hope that's a 13. My writing is terrible. Okay. Any time I like, get to where I say to go, and I like, hey, that was my error. That's a bad penmanship. First Corinthians 12, 13. Paul. Right into a carnal church. For by one spirit, capital S, are we all baptized into one body. And in verse, have been all made to drink unto one spirit. Where is the fire? There is no fire. Galatians 3.27 Church age epistles, we're, we're reading now. Galatians 3, 
Galatians 3.27. And we're only checking what the Bible says. In Galatians 3.27, it's quite interesting because this is backing up what we spoke about before about water and baptism, water and the Holy Spirit, water and fire. In Galatians 3.27, the Bible says, For as many of you as been baptized into Christ. Well, is that water? Is that fire? Or is that the Spirit? What's the member of the Trinity? God the Father? God the Son? God the Holy Spirit? When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are baptized in Christ. Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. There's no fire. One last place, Colossians 2.12. A couple more books to the right. Colossians 2.12. And this verse will back up what we've already said about dying to yourself. No water. Colossians 2.12, buried with him in baptism, death. Wherein also you rise with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Being dead to your sins. See what I mean? Baptism is dying to your sins, dying to the flesh. Where is that fire? Alright, I'll show you. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Now we saw the Holy Spirit. That comes in a believer. Remember I told you that baptism is not always water? Okay, Revelation 20. I'm going to show you a water that's not water. And I'm going to show you the baptism of the fire. You don't want this baptism. Revelation 20 verse 15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What does baptism mean? It means immersion. What is that baptism of fire? You are put inside not a lake of water, but a lake of fire. You are in those flames as you would go into water. We are in the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's in us, you don't want that fire. And if you've been in the church age, in the church, if you've been baptized in the Holy, Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit it, it dwells in you, you're not getting that baptism of fire. No way. You're saved, you're not going to hell. If you teach you can get the Holy Spirit and you can get the baptism of fire, you have called the gospel and the salvation of God a liar. Because you either get the Holy Ghost or you get to go to hell. You don't get both. You see, you see how much? Oh, get baptized, Holy Ghost, get baptized. You see now how much that, that much is a heresy. Oh, well, you know, I'm getting baptized with the water and I'm saved. No, it's a heresy. And you see how much that baptism when you've got to live a daily life, that flesh, you've got to put it under the ground? And then when we die, if the Lord tarries, I know some people are cremated. But you become ashes. You don't stay in that fire if you're saved. You're absent from the body and you're present with the Lord. Though your body may be ashes, you're with the Lord. You're not in hell unless you rejected Jesus. And when you rejected Jesus, you did not get the Holy Spirit. Now, see the heresy of the teaching. It's complete heresy. Now, baptism of the Spirit, baptism of the water, baptism of fire. Look at John 3.23. And believe it or not, what we're just taught, you can get one central theme. And you can change that central theme into a heresy. John chapter 3, verse 23.
And now I'm going to show you why sprinkled, dunkled, dangled, and all that is completely wrong. John 3, 23, and John, that's John the Baptist, was also baptized in Anna, Eon, near Salam. Because there was much water there, and there, and they came, they were baptized. Why would John need much water if he was sprinkling, dunking, duping, dwanking, dwinking? I heard about this old colored preacher up in New York. He baptized with, with a fire hydrant. All right, let me ask you a question. Here we go. Evidently, John was immersing them in the water because you need deep water, right? You have to put them completely under. Let's get for that for a fact. How do you know that? Are we completely in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit completely in us before saved? Isn't that immersion? We are in Christ. We're inside Christ. The Holy Spirit is inside us. That's immersion. God didn't come along, oh, here's some, here's some Holy Spirit. Here's some, he didn't sprinkle the Holy Spirit on us. And the Holy Spirit don't take us and sprinkle us in, in, on God. That's wrong. Sprinkling's wrong. Those that were not written in the, land, in the book of life, I want to keep saying land for that. Those that were not written in the book of life, they were put into the lake of fire and they sprinkled the lake of fire on. You don't get the lake of fire sprinkled on you. You go into the lake of fire. Now you see the danger of that heresy, sprinkling, dunking, danking, and everyone else, but immersion. Now you see how the water, the spirit, and the fire all go into one, but you see how they, they completely mess it all up. And who's the father of that mess up? The devil. Imagine me going on the street and well, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to sprinkle you in hell. That's a lot better than going into hell. Because if I sprinkle hell on you, you might get some places where you don't get hell. But the rich man that went to hell in Luke chapter 15, I think it is, his eyes, his ears, his tongue, his feet, his toe, everything was in that flame being tormented. That's not sprinkled. And when the Catholics and the Protestants do your best, they just pour it on your head. Well, okay, you might get burns in your head for all eternity, but not your whole body. That violates Luke saying that guy, everything of his body was in torment. In the flame. My salvation is I am in Christ. Christ is not sprinkled on me. I mean, there used to be a body wash, and I grew up with sprinkle a sprinkle a day. That's not salvation. That's not hell, and that's not the water. You're to go under and through that water. Come on, go. Uh, I don't know where the nearest graveyard is around here. But when you go into a graveyard, you don't see a finger sticking out, or a head sticking out, or feet sticking out. They are inside that dirt. You don't go to a funeral and a guy there, or reverend, pastor, whatever, you don't see him take some dirt and throw it at him. You see why it's important? You see why sprinkle, dangle, dinky, buku, and all that? You see why that's wrong? That's not proper. It's like the Jehovah Witness came to me one time, well, you know, you know, hell's the grave. I'm like, oh my God, what? I said, my grandma just died, and I buried her in hell. I should have put her in a tree. Well, well, that's not what I... No, didn't you just say the grave is hell? So when I put a dead body in grave, you're telling me that's... No, see, that's a heresy. See, it sounds good. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Oh, all right. Let me take you on top of the Empire State Bill and do a great swan dive. Try it. Come with me to the hospital and let's get everybody... I can do all things through Christ. Come with me to the hospital and let's get everybody healed in that hospital. I, I guess you're taking the verse out of context. And when we're talking about the baptism of fire, that's a severe error because that's hell. You can't get... If you say you can get both, then you're saying, God, I can get saved and I can go to hell. 
you see why some people say, I lost it? You lost it by their teaching. You have given them insecurity. Will be to you at either judgment for teaching that. So immersion. You don't need much water because you're going to sprinkle dank or dukabuku and all that. Now, what is the big deal about baptism? 1 Corinthians 1.17. Hey, you say, three weeks on baptism. Isn't it a big deal? I, before I asked Lisa to marry me, I brought her to the preacher. And for him to witness to her, because if she didn't get saved, I wasn't going to marry her. And I didn't want to witness to her, because I didn't want her to get saved because she loved me. So in the pastor's office, she received Christ as her Savior. And she said, well, I need to be, and the pastor said, you got to be baptized. We explained to her. And one week later, she was baptized. Well, when she went under the water, well, evidently not her whole entire body went under the water. Some of her hairs did not go under water. And that raised such a focus and bother among some Christians that she needed to be baptized again. No, the principle was there just because some hairs didn't go under. That's okay. That's a lie. That was an error. Now, there's some people, if, if, I don't know how some churches, but if the Lord would give me a church, I don't know, I pray for it. You say, you got somebody in a wheelchair that can't get in the water. You got somebody in a nursing home, they're saved, but they can't go in the water. You can't immerse them. Would you sprinkle, dunkle, dangle, dunkle? No. The Bible says immersion. If I can't immerse them in water, whether they... Some people are afraid of water. I'm not going to do anything but immersion. Well, what, what, what? Did this dying thief on the cross that got saved, was he baptized? And yet Christ said, I'll see you in paradise. You see what I mean? Now, baptism didn't save you. It's symbolic. And if, uh, if a patient in a nursing home or a prison, if I can't bring in water and I can't immerse them, that doesn't mean they're going to go to hell. They just can't do that part. Some people, oh, we've got to do it no matter what. And the Bible says immerse. 1 Corinthians 1.17. Paul speaking. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not of wisdom of word, at least the cross of Christ should be made none of the fact. Paul says, I'm not a baptizer. Now, why is it Paul a baptizer? And I've seen this error in the churches. Supposedly, so many people got saved in the church that the missionary that came to the church, Paul the missionary, helped the pastor be baptized. That's wrong. Mm. Missionaries don't come to your church and baptize the pastor of the local church only. Now, are you going to go to hell? No, but if you're going to be biblical, you say, well, what about a missionary over the field? He's there to start a church. He's, he's not the pastor of a church. He's a missionary starting to start the church, set up the office of the, of the bishop, and have the bishop of that church baptized. Paul's a missionary. He didn't baptize. That's scripture. Verse uh, 13. Saying, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Christmas and God. So Paul did do some baptism. At least any should say that I would have been baptized in my own name. Now there are people who have been baptized. Well, I've been baptized in this pastor. I've been baptized in this church. I've been baptized in the River Jordan. I've been baptized. We met a guy one time. They brought me all the way down here so I can be baptized in the Atlantic Ocean. Big deal. Who cares? You don't mean that this, this preacher baptized? I don't care. My question is, were you saved? You see, baptism is not that big of a deal. The dying thief on the cross did not need to be baptized. They did not stop the crucifixion that after. Oh, stop, wait a minute, hold on, we've got to get this guy baptized. 
Well, I'm waiting for the, for the world's greatest preacher to come to our church because he's going to do a baptism. Your pastor is supposed to do the baptism. Even that guy is a preacher or a pastor. Is he the pastor? Well, he, no, he's a pastor of another church. And he's not the one baptizing, according to the scriptures. A pastor baptizes the people in his congregation. John chapter 4. The Bible sets rules, and sometimes ministries do not follow the rules of the Bible. And they'll be at error, and they'll face wood, hay, or stone. If you don't do what the Bible says, you're wrong. And they'll worry about more. Well, the Bible says, you know, a man should not wear what pertains to a woman. Check your Bible. The men wore the skirts. Jesus sent the apostles out and said, no one take your purse. Uh-oh. Yeah. John chapter 4. Like people don't like what I say, because I say the Bible. Marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. When, therefore, John chapter 4, verse 1. Maybe we'll get to chapter 4, but... When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. So even John's baptism, Jesus, they were baptizing more than what John had done. Though Jesus himself, now see the parentheses, that's a big note. Parentheses in your Bible mean, pay attention, this is a note. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Oh, I hear Jesus is coming. I'm going to be baptized by Jesus. Jesus baptized. No, Peter. No, I want Jesus. What does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? It's not the big deal who baptized you. The big deal is, are you saved? The next step is to be baptized, but it's not crucial. And you are to be immersed completely underwater by your pastor. What do you do in prison? If the guy's not a pastor and he's a member of a church as I was, and I had people get saved under the three prisons I was at, I had no authority to baptize them unless my pastor would come to the church and we bring a pool. We can't bring a pool big enough. My pastor was unable to come to the prison. So I baptized nobody that got saved at the prison. Woe with me. No, not woe with me. I did it scriptural. Now hopefully when they got out of prison, they got to a Bible-believing church saying, Sir, you know what? I, you know, I was saved at the, at the prison ministry and I'm a now member of this church. I need to be baptized. Well, the pastor didn't do it. No, but he's the pastor that he has chosen to be in the church. Paul, like, see, like, like Paul, I was a missionary in the jail. And I've seen him bring in these little kiddie pools, and you can't immerse them. Don't do it. Now, I've seen in, in the army... And the Marines over Afghanistan, they get those, those payloaders. The, the, uh, the John Deere track. You can fill that thing with enough water and a man can go completely underwater. You can do that. That's... All right, so... Uh, Alright, let's, we'll, let's finish up here. When to baptize. I think this is important. Mark chapter 16. We've got a few scriptures here, but we'll, we'll finish up with Mark, I mean, Mark and Acts. When to baptize. This is important. I don't think we should read this. And I think we're done with baptism. Unless it shows up again in the Bible. Yeah, as far as the study now, 
we will be done with baptism. And no, we didn't all get wet. You would figure after a message of baptism, I would have a thing over here, we all get baptized. No. Mark 16, 16. Now, when we look at these passages, and you know, we got five more passages. Mark 16. Now, let's read the word. And now we're going to kick some religion. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth. So you take the child of the infant, you put him in the baptismal dress, you bring him down to what does that child believe? Infant baptism does not fit, Mark 16. What is the prerequisite? And we're going to see it over and over. You must believe. An infant can't do that. Even with God, father and Godmother, they can't speak for that child. And that is another heresy in the church age where Christians have died, Christians have been excommunicated, Christians have had their property stolen and confiscated by the government. And I'm talking about Connecticut, and I'm talking about Massachusetts of America, they were called separate because they didn't go with the congregational church in infant baptism because the Bible says an infant is not to be baptized. That's a big, big, big heresy that religions hate the Baptist because we don't baptize our children. That's where the Anabaptists came from. We were taking infants that the Baptist church baptized when they grew up, we witnessed to them about Jesus. And then when they believed on Jesus, we were baptizing them. Not again. They weren't baptized the first time, according to the Scriptures. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Oh boy, that's a verse. Acts 2.38. Well, we're going to look at Acts 2.38. But with the water dogs, Acts 2.38 is their salvation. Acts 2.38, more people have gone to hell on Acts 2.38 than any verse in the Bible. But we're not going to look at Acts 2.38 as a salvation. We're going to look at Acts 2.38 as what the Bible says. Acts 2.38 Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop right there. The rest of it, they say salvation. What was first? Even in early book of Acts, repent, then baptism. So, Mark says believe, Peter says repent, then baptism. Acts chapter 8. And a good title for this message would be Baptism, what you didn't think it was. A lot, of pe a lot of people are going to hear this. What? <laughs> they're going to have to listen to two or three times. Uh, uh, or they're going to say, that's heresy. Because that's not what my church teaches. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 8, verse 36. Hold on, another one story. Acts 8, 36. All right, I'm going to read it to you how the modern Bibles read it. Then I'll read it to you properly, okay? Here's the modern Bible. And as they went down, as they went on their way, there came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water unto Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. That's what modern Bibles say. You got a modern Bible, it just read what I just read to you. Now let's read what the King James Bible says. And let's read the truth. Verse 36. And as they went their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart. That's removed from Bible. Modern Bibles support the fact that baptism will save him. 
by removing what key word that we saw in Mark and what key word do we see in Acts chapter 2? Believe. Is removed out of the modern Bible. Philip, Peter, Jesus in the, in the Gospel of Mark said, believe, repent, and believe before salvation. Now what can an infant believe and repent of? I sold my diaper. Stop kicking it. I have to kick the Catholics and the Protestants. Because where do they get off infant baptism? In the congregational church. Well, the Godfather and the God, the fooey with them. They can't do nothing. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 47. Acts 10, 47. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well? Now, this is a little bit weirder. Because the, here's a Jew dealing with a Gentile, but they got the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. You know how you get the Holy Ghost? It, you're saved. And it's reversed because God's dealing with the Jewish people and the Gentile. It's reversed. But after they received the Holy Ghost, then they said, let's baptize them. It's the same thing. Believe, repent, get saved, then baptism. Acts chapter... Oh wait, what is that? 18? If not 18, we've got 18. All right. 16. 16? Acts 16. That's a funny looking six. I think that six got six. Acts 16.31. I got to repent of that. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and all that were in the house. He took it the same hour that night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized. What came first? Believe, repentance, then baptism. We almost missed that with a terrible handwriting. Acts chapter 8, last place, Acts 18. Acts 18, 8. Last place for the day, we're done with Bethany. Acts 18, 8. Why okay? Sounds fun. Christmas. Christmas. We're going to know that name in glory. The chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So when somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know, baptism for salvation, you can tell them for me, you can say this for me, in my words, baptism saves. <laughs> You can say, I said that. Now you properly, that's not what the Bible teaches. Well, we're going to have our baby christened. We're going to have our baby... No, sorry. Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? Ah, no! Uh-uh! I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, you got to be baptized. Uh-uh! No! No, Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to be baptized with fire. By the grace of God, by the glory of God, I am not going to be baptized with fire. You may be, but not me, but you can't get both. And believe me, they'll give you that puppy book, that puppy dog look like, huh? <laughs> and then you can tell them what we just looked at today. Baptism is not always water. Baptism is after we're saved. We have a public show of a testimony. We are saved. We're going to die to ourselves. We're going to be buried. We're going to come out as a new person. When I live daily for Christ, I'm going to have to put this flesh in the grave and say, No! 
Calm down. Relax. We let the Holy Spirit do a work. But we have a zombie in us. And then if we are to, if the Lord is to tarry, we're going to die, they're going to baptize us. They don't sprinkle dirt on us. They don't put a little dirt on our forehead. They put us underground. And then you're not going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You're going to be baptized either or. I suggest to you the Holy Ghost, not with fire. And the pastor of a congregation of the church, not the missionary, not a special, not anybody like that, is to completely immerse you. They can't complete, completely immerse you. Don't do it. I know people who've been afraid of water. And I'll tell you, people who've been afraid of water, within time, God has worked out that fear and they were immersed. They got the victory. If you cannot immerse somebody as what the Bibles do not baptize them. I know a guy who go out and witness, tell people about Jesus, and he say he'd be baptized them right after. I, no, I would not do that. You're not a pastor. It's scripturally wrong. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for your word. Lord, may we be faithful and true to your word. Lord, what we said, if somebody hears it, they're not going to like what they heard because they don't like it. It's who cares what they don't like. It's what you have said and what you have set forth. Either we're going to believe the Bible or we're going to believe fairy tales. I'll take the Bible. Lord, may, may this video get out to help people to grow, help people to get right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.